Kia ora. This is Christina Hoppner from the Mahara Project at Catalyst. Today I would like to show you a number of the new features that we have released for Mahara 17.10 in order to give you an overview of what you can look forward to once you are able to install that instance. We would like to thank all our contributors who have shared bug fixes and also new features with the entire community and made this new major point release possible. Now let's take a look. So in the past, we've had site statistics and institution statistics and user reports. These statistics gave you an overview of all, your, all the people that are on the site or across all the institutions that are on the site. Um, showed you how many members there were, how many pages, blogs, artifacts and posts they had and so on. It also gave you an overview of the, the content types that were being used as well as um, modified in a particular time frame and then also historical data over those. But what you were not able to do really is to look at individual people and their usage of the site. And that's what has changed through the AIM project. The AIM project is a collaboration between Dublin City University and um, the University of Sussex. And the project's title is Advanced Analytics in Mahara. And through this project, we were able to consolidate the reporting areas in Mahara and, also, and in particular create a number of new reports. So now all statistics and user reports are available via the reports area in the administration and that is available to site and institution administrators as well as institution and um, site staff if they are allowed. And all the reports are available through the configuration button where you can choose the institution over which you'd like to report over. And if you're a site administrator, of course, you see all the institutions listed. As institution administrators, you would only see the ones that you are an admin for. Then you can choose the report type. And currently that is grouped into four categories, namely content groups, institution and people. And certain reports are only available to site administrators and um, not to individual institutions. We have new reports are, for example, the groups report, where you can see the number of shared pages, number of pages, number of comments on pages and so on, as well as the collaboration report, page activity, and also user activity reports um, are amongst the new reports. And as you've seen, when you change a report, you see immediately what is included in this report, what you are reporting over, and you also see um, the time frame in which data is available. Because for the new reports, it is imperative that you have event logging turned on in the site configuration, because only through that will certain activity be recorded in the Mahara database which Elasticsearch then uses in order to index all the data. Then you can choose your time frame. A little tidbit, if you want to report over activities that happened today and that Elasticsearch already indexed, you will need to choose tomorrow's date because the date shown here is always midnight. And then you can also decide if you want to choose any additional columns to show in your report. Once you are set, you can submit your query and the results are being displayed. And then nice contrast to previous statistics is that you can now report over individual people and see their engagement on the site and also assist them if you feel like they they need assistance and need need more encouragement to create their portfolios. You can also download those reports as CSV files in order to um, analyze that data further in any of the software that you, you are used to using for that. 
And by using Elasticsearch, we can speed up the retrieval of the data because imagine you have a very busy site, have all the events being logged. Um, that is a lot of data that accumulates and therefore we need a powerful engine in the backend that makes this data available very, very quickly. The nice side effect is that you do get full text search um, in Mahara itself, allowing you not only to search for users, but any content that you have access to on the site. We did upgrade Elasticsearch to Elasticsearch 5, therefore bringing the Elasticsearch component in Mahara into the modern times and um, look forward to keeping that more up to date. Speaking of search, there is a search built in now for notifications that is separate from Elasticsearch and only looks at the notifications as it is more of a filter as well. And so if you look for anything in your portfolio and notifications, um, then you can search for that and also filter according to subject message or uh, who you got it from um, to find your notifications more quickly. This search works both on the inbox as well as on the sent messages. Now, Mahara is responsive. And that means when you make your screen smaller, uh, then the site adopts to that width and changes the content around in order to make it fit so that you don't have to zoom in all the time. This hasn't been possible yet with the logo. When you have a large logo, it does not really work nicely on a site when you go and make the screen really small because the header just moves too far below. We've changed that in Mahara 17.10, allowing you to upload a small logo, which is suitable for small screens. So if you go into your institution settings, you will find the option of small logo, for which you can upload a square file. And please note that it does need to be a square file um, so that it is resized properly and fits into the available space. And now, when you are on a small screen, the logo is displayed nicely without having the double header shown. Only when you're at certain breakpoints, of course, um, will it not necessarily work as expected, but all the major breakpoints that Mahara currently supports for tablets and also mobile phones are respected to make the logo small and displayed in the proper area. So kind of going back again to Mahara 1704, um, one thing that has been bugging a number of people is that it is not, it, or there, there were quite a number of buttons on the edit screen. So if we go into the edit screen in Mahara 1704, you have the edit content, edit layout, choose skin, edit title and description. And then on the left hand side, you also have the display page link and the share page link. And whenever you clicked on any of these options, um, you would move to a different page and then um, not, especially when you went to the share page, you went completely outside of your portfolio and didn't know whether you were still on that page and didn't have any back buttons. So we've changed that in Mahara 17.10 and consolidated a number of the, the buttons available, simply to settings, edit, introduce the share button. And now there's only the display link on the left hand side to give you a preview of what your page looks like. Now, when you go to the settings page, you have all the important page settings there, starting with the page title and description and tags, going all the way to, to being able to choose the layout and then also skins if you have one. And if you click the share button, 
you do stay on the same screen so that you do also get the title of your page and can set the sharing permissions specifically for this portfolio. That means for this page or this entire collection, if the page is part of a collection. And that means since we are giving the permissions for only one particular portfolio, we can put the secret URLs directly on this screen in order to have that set up easily, rather than you needing to go to another screen in order to set it up. Now let's take a look at one of the new group features. If you allowed submissions in your group, um, you, you are used to being able to see who has submitted something to your group and can click on those portfolios directly, review them and leave feedback. However, what you can't see is who has not yet submitted a portfolio to the group. So you would need to keep a tally on your own and review which students are still, which students work is still outstanding. Now this has changed in Mahara 17.10 because now you can see which group members have not yet submitted anything to the group. And the last feature that I'd like to briefly introduce to you is one also related to institutional use of Mahara namely um, allowing you to set a parent authentication to LTI. In Mahara 17.4, we introduced LTI for single sign-on purposes. That means learning tools, inter learning tools interoperability, um, a standard that is used extensively by learning management systems, can be used to connect a LMS to Mahara. It was already possible to use it with other authentication methods so that you would only have one account for students. But now in Mahara 17.10, it is possible to choose SAML as parent authority directly for LTI so that you don't have to set up that connection for the accounts manually. And now students can either log in via SAML first or LTI first and always end up in the same account as long as the authentication method for their account is uh, via the SAML plugin. So SAML supports SAML2 but also CAS and Shibboleth and in Mahada 17.10 also ADFS. Now we have a number of other new features that I have not touched on in this short video that you can explore. And we also have a number of bug fixes, of course, as usual. If you'd like to see all the new features that are affecting users directly or that can be changed on the Mahada site, uh, you should go to the Mahada user manual and look at the user manual for Mahada 17.10, where we have the section for what's new in Mahada 17.10 as well as the index entries that give more detailed information about them. And you can download and install the new version uh, when you go to mahada.org and click the download button. Installation instructions are also linked from the homepage directly. Alternatively, of course, you can also use Git uh, for your code management uh, to make it easier to see changes and especially also deal with any custom code that you might have on your own site. We look forward to seeing you in the Mahara community under mahara.org and ask questions in the forums or post your observations about the new release of Mahara 17.10 and of course also share your own development work for Mahara with the rest of the community.